The color and brightness of space is a complex and even somewhat divisive topic, both in the realms of astronomy and astrophotography. Space itself is nothing, or at least not something in the way that we understand it intuitively, not something in the way that we can sense it, though everywhere it is filled with electromagnetic radiation, much of it outside the visible spectrum, and occasionally bits of matter, and who knows, maybe dark matter and dark energy if those theories are proven out. But, unless considering those abstract possibilities and looking outside the visible range of light, space is fundamentally nothing. It doesn't reflect, it doesn't emit, and absence is black. Even if we look at a black object here on Earth, for example, Vanna Black, which absorbs 99.965% of all visible light, we perceive black by the absence that it creates. Vanna Black absorbs light. It creates an absence of it, and therefore our brains perceive it as black. Space, likewise, in the absence of something emitting or reflecting, is black. However, there are plenty of interesting phenomena overhead that give us the impression that space is not black. The one we are undoubtedly most aware of here on Earth is sky glow. Sky glow can result from air glow and light pollution. Light pollution derives from man-made sources of light on Earth, and air glow is the result of the natural luminescence of gases in the atmosphere. It is a substantial problem and has led to the need to run filters in image trains between telescopes and cameras. But even if one were in a remote region where there is no light pollution, there would still be air glow, much dimmer on its own but there, and hiding the true darkness of space. When we get beyond our Earth, we face zodiacal light. This is caused by the dust in our solar system reflecting the light of the sun and other light emitting off of planets and various moons. It is bright enough that it can be recorded without much difficulty with a telescope on Earth, especially one set in a region of true dark skies. It is also bright enough that it hides the true darkness of space. How dark is space? Well, in this video, we've gone on a virtual journey far outside our star system and even far outside our galaxy. Within the galaxy, where there are abundant stars and gases, there is plenty of ambient light that the human eye unassisted can pick up. But beyond the Milky Way, intergalactic space would look like this to the unaided human eye. Out there are countless galaxies, but to the unaided human eye, it's almost black. Another way of looking at this is that if the Milky Way galaxy suddenly vanished, leaving us floating here in the depths of space as an observer, with no dust nor stars of our galaxy to interfere with our view, the nearest neighboring galaxy, Andromeda, would appear only as a dim haze, and roughly 15 degrees from the Andromeda galaxy, we might see an even dimmer haze, the Triangulum galaxy, and not much beyond that, because everything beyond that is dimmer than magnitude 6.5, the typical minimum luminosity limit of the human eye. But, since the Milky Way, and the planets and dust in our own star system, are not going to conveniently get out of the way for us to assess the true appearance of space, we must rely on the measurements taken by probes sent out to the far corners of our solar system. To get a sense of the true darkness of space, we have to look far beyond our world. The New Horizons probe, launched toward Pluto in 2006, has provided some of the best measurements to date. Data pertaining to the cosmic optical background was taken after the probe passed Jupiter, and later when the probe was significantly further out in the solar system. To get good data, it had to get far away from our star, and far beyond the dust of the inner solar system, because the cosmic optical background is just that dark. By definition, it is an optical background, Ergo, if it were bright enough, it would be visible to the naked eye. But it is exceedingly dim. Dim enough that to really perceive it, New Horizons has to go to the farthest reaches of the solar system and point its telescopes in the darkest regions of space. That is so dim that even the best telescopes here on Earth could not possibly detect it in any reliable way. Because the cosmic optical background is many millions of times dimmer than the human eye can perceive, and far dimmer than almost any known light emitting or reflecting object in space, and any attempts to observe for it from Earth would pick up sky glow and zodiacal light first. But deep space has other diffuse sources of light. One of them is the Integrated Flux Nebula, otherwise known as the IFN. The Integrated Flux Nebula is comprised of dust and gases that lie outside the main body of our galaxy. It is so dim that it is a fairly recently identified phenomenon, 
and its brightest sections have a magnitude of 24.5 per arc second, meaning the IFN is almost 16 million times dimmer than the human eye can perceive. It is so dim that a good telescope and a sensitive modern astro camera pointed at it might require exposures in excess of 20 hours to film it well, and exposures of 7 or 8 hours just to make it show at all. And if not sufficiently and specifically exposed for, wherever the IFN is, space will also simply appear as black. This presents us with the problem of what color is space? What brightness is space? And for astrophotographers, how exactly do we portray it? In the old days, the days of chemical photography, this would have been an easy question to answer. Where light did not affect the chemicals on negatives, space was going to turn out black, portraying the absence of light, just as our eyes perceive it. But with digital photography, generally we are going to view our images on monitors. And black doesn't work all that well on many types of monitors. Most monitors are designed to focus on presenting color and luminosity. And since so many monitors are used for gaming or watching videos, fast and smooth frame rates. So regions of space that should be portrayed as black or nearly black often suffer a phenomenon called black crush or just crushing. These monitors, incapable of portraying blacks well, simplify the darkest regions of an image so that they have a blotchy look, often appearing as dark squared off chunks against other dark squared off chunks of a slightly different shade. The best and most accurate way to work around this is to use a monitor that is capable of portraying true blacks. Unfortunately, few are. The technology primarily confined to OLED monitors and a few select VA monitors. With such monitors, when they are rated for good blacks, black appears as really beautiful, this pure dark ebony like the sky between the stars on the darkest nights. It is rich in its emptiness of all light. But without such monitors, we just get black crushing and perhaps light bleeding into the image from the monitor's background illumination source. This has led many people doing astrophotography to try to compensate for the weaknesses of many monitors in portraying black by artificially lifting the brightness of space, portraying it as some shade of gray. This can indeed resist the black crushing phenomenon that one would perceive on monitors incapable of showing true and good blacks. The cost, and there is always a cost for every photographic operation, is that space itself becomes falsely presented because space, unless there is something in it emitting or reflecting light, and, just as importantly, unless you happen to also be exposing for whatever that light source is, is going to be black. So images like this will present inherent inaccuracies. Somehow, the notion has arisen within the realm of astrophotography, though, that space is not black, to the point that there are a lot of images floating around on sites like Astrobin and elsewhere, portraying space, not space with nebulae in it, not space with galaxies, not space with any kind of object at all, but empty space as some shade of gray. And among some astrophotographers, there has come to be such a powerful drive to shun the black of space that one can easily find numerous images where the histograms at the dark side, where space is, have been so hyper-stretched that noise becomes a predominant color throughout space. And that noise was accepted as the color of space perhaps even deemed to be desirable within an image. I think the temptation to shun and artificially brighten the darkness of space, empty space, results from the difficulties of modern technology in portraying black. When a photo editor is looking at truly black regions in a dark section of space, without a truly black capable monitor, everything in the darkest ranges of luminosity will experience black crushing creating an unattractive, chunky, or blocky quality in the darkest ranges within an image. I do not and never have believed that it is my place in these videos to tell somebody what kind of image they like or what kind of style they should shoot. All I can tell you for certain is somehow this myth has come into astrophotography that space is not supposed to be black. But unless your camera is targeted towards something that emits or reflects light and has been exposing long enough to detect that light, space is black. Forcing brightness into space is artificial, and forcing it too hard will introduce artifacts that are not really there, and can ultimately degrade the information contained within the entire image. But if you prefer illuminated space, that's fine too. It's not what space really looks like, but you have some advantages there. You will be able to portray your images on a wider range of media, 
as once you get far enough away from the darkest blacks, most monitors and even video will not crush your blacks. This is a strategic and stylistic choice that you'll have to make for yourself. For my part, I tend to lean toward more accurately portraying space. If it's empty or I have not exposed long enough to portray phenomena that might be contained within it, I will portray the space as black. This leads us finally to the subject of black clipping. Black clipping is when information is cut out of an image, and it can happen with any photographic editing operation that results in moving information off the dark side of the histogram. However, if the reality is that there was no information there, or very little, then the portrayal of black is accurate to what is there. A genuine portrayal of black, where black is, is not clipping. It's actually fidelity to the image, preserving what is there, because a lack of information is also a form of information. The challenge of dealing with black is one of the more vexing problems with digital photography. And, by its very nature, astrophotography is especially subject to this challenge. In an upcoming video, we'll look at selecting monitors that are capable of working well with blacks. And, as well, consider the benefits of working in other color spaces and luminosity ranges. Well, I hope you found this video helpful, or at least thought-provoking, and perhaps has challenged you to consider further the role of space in astrophotography. And if you enjoyed it, or think it's nuts or whatever, feel free to leave a comment below. As always, thanks for watching. Now get out there and shoot the sky.